All right, um, as requested, I am doing a short video recording of what the main solar system of my campaign looks like. So this is Nexus, this is the actual sun. Um, Nexus is actually a very bright object. Um, as one can tell, it's, uh, if I remember right, it's an A2 classification. It's been a while. Um, it's extremely bright. It's about 1,819 times as bright as the solar system sun. So, yeah, um, really big, really bright star. Tell from the size. Anyway, um, one of the things about Sharna and the way it's set up is that it's ex supposed to be extremely difficult, one, for anybody to find it, and two, an incredibly precarious position in the universe. Um, that part is still accurate, although not representing its... Um, Sharna is supposed to be in the shadow of a different planet, and this is, this is a little bit not realistic, and it's extremely difficult for me to precisely um, set that. So in this case, it's just orbiting the planet instead of in the shadow perpetually. But in any case, um, zooming out from Nexus, uh, the first planet that you see is Uba. Uba is a Mercury-like planet, um, horribly, horribly high in temperature. Uh, let's see, yeah, 1487 Celsius in temperature. Um, get further out, though, and you see this huge conglomeration of things over there. This is actually where Sharn is at. Uh, let's go zoom in into Essie Sol Solsharna, which is somewhere. Oh, I'm actually already on it. So Essie Sol Solsharna, really hard to say, roughly about the size and mass of Jupiter. Um, I, I should I take that back. It's roughly the mass of Jupiter. It's actually a smaller planet. Um, this is something I'm probably going to need to alter because it doesn't quite work out, but works out decently well. Um, you see lots of the moons of Se Sol Sharna along with Sharna. Sharna itself is actually a moon of Se Sol Sharna. Um, it does orbit, it's a really slow orbital period, and due to how um, weak my computer is in order to simulate this entire thing, which sounds strange, but it's true, um, the universe sandbox is a single core process, so it can't handle all that much. But anyway, due to how weak it is, I can only get it about to be a minute per tick, so one minute per frame, effectively. Um, unfortunately, that's not very fast, but... Um, you can zoom out and sort of see all of these little spinny things. Yeah, these are all moons that orbit Se Sol Sharna, including Sharna itself. Sharna is actually the outwardmost moon, and it's supposed to actually be behind Se Sol Sharna, so like right in front of us right now. Um, you just notice that Se Sol Sharna has a ring. Anyway, let's go ahead and zoom out some. Keep in mind, I'm currently centered on Se Sol Sharna. As you zoom out, you'll see why that's a little weird. So, here we've got a ring. Um, this is actually supposed to be a satellite, or not a satellite, um, asteroid belt. Unfortunately, I can't really generate those very easily without slowing everything to a crawl. Um, so I'm generating it via rings of the sun, basically. So that's the first asteroid belt. Keep that in mind, that there's an asteroid belt a little bit outside. Uh, let's go ahead and close that so I can see. Then we have Una. Unus, sorry. Unus, oops, zoom in further. Unus is a planetary system. It has two moons, Unus 2 and Unus 1. Unus 1 is very close to the planet. I mean, this is way closer than the moon is to Earth. Um, Unus 2 is closer. I think, it's, I think it's actually further away than the moon to Earth. But um, neither of these moons are very large. You know, third of the mass of the moon, eighth of the mass of the moon, roughly. Um, these two moons are very heavy in ice and water. It's really about the only thing special about them. Um, this is generally about as far as Sharnin astronomy can go from the surface of Sharna. Um, the atmosphere of Sharna is very opaque, we'll say, and it's really hard to differentiate a whole bunch in the way of smaller objects, and this is pretty much the furthest that you go accurately. Further out, we've got another planet going around. Um, again, you can already tell that you can't see Sharna from this angle at all. Um, it's kind of just a mass of crap. 
Uh, you can at least see SE Soul Shriner from back in the zoom, but we've got a long ways to go. Um, here's another asteroid belt. Again, keep in mind it's supposed to be roughly on the same plane. Here's the other habitable planet. So, yes, it has a moon. The moon is actually a little bit... It's about twice the size of Earth's actual moon, mass-wise. Um, this is actually an inhabited planet. Uh, let's see... Did it save the temperature? No, it didn't. This is actually much cooler than that because of the reflectivity of the planet. Um, the atmosphere is reflecting a bunch of light. Um, it has a lower greenhouse effect than Earth does. But anyway... Um, I... My brain's not working very well today, so I'm not going to be able to pronounce that. But in any case, that's actually a habited planet. Um, that's actually the correct radius from Nexus in order to have a habitable zone. This is really far out. I mean, this is 31.4 astronomical units out. An astronomical unit, keep in mind, is the dis average distance from Earth to the Sun. So, yeah, really far out. Let's go back to centering on Nexus. So further out, we have Skisanol. So we can no longer even differentiate SC Solshana from this distance. Um, pretty much, I can see the ring, and that's about it. And that's still not the furthest most planet. That is. I actually named this planet before the Nintendo Wii ever came out, so... Yeah, Nintendo. Suck it. Um, it's 264 astronomical units out, which, if I remember correctly, is substantially further than Pluto, was it? Uh, let's see. Pluto astronomical units from the Sun is apparently 29.7. So, the actual habitable zone for Nexus is further out than Pluto. Just wrap your head around that. So, generally, this is the system. Ignore these lines over here. These were just light pulses that I decided to make to look pretty. Um, so, we actually has an orbital period of about one and a half millennia. But, yeah. This is the reason why nobody can see anything. So, say about like that is what most people would see. Well, it's probably a little bit brighter than that because this is a really bright planet and the universe sandbox doesn't really represent light very well. Basically, this entire area is drowned out by extremely bright light. So, Astronomers from other systems would never be able to see it. I'm going to go ahead and stop this because this was supposed to be short, and I can never do short things.